Hi everybody, it's Peg Fitzpatrick. I am so excited. There's a huge thunderstorm going on and it seems like it's the weather, but it's really going to be this hangout. My friend <laughs> Susan Ruman is here and he, say hi, Sue. Hey, hashtag happening. <laughs> okay, so Sue is on the Cape, in, on Cape Cod, and I am in New Hampshire and we are going to have a fantastic hangout to share with you the secrets of Instagram. Instagram is totally the opposite of Google Plus, but there are some similarities in ways that you can use them together or independently, but you can throw Instagram into your social media marketing and meet a whole new crew of people, which Sue excels at teaching people how to use Instagram to connect with real customers, which is impressive. You hear a lot of people talk on social media about how much they do and and their blogs and all those things, but Sue has clients that have met clients through Instagram only. So um, I'm excited to share Sue Zimmerman with my Google Plus friends. I met Sue in person in Sydney, Australia, which is hilarious because we live two hours from each other in the States. <laughs> but we met across the world in Sydney at Canva, at the Canva offices. Um, Sue is a Canva fan, and she has shared Canva with her audience. So um, I want to make sure that you guys follow her everywhere, and I'm going to turn it over to Sue, and she is going to do an amazing presentation for you guys. So hey, everybody. So great to be here. I'm really jazzed because Peggy and I put together this awesome presentation that we're going to do right from my phone. So, so exciting. Yeah, so you're going to be watching this as if you're in my brain, kind of, sort of, um, <laughs> or looking over my shoulder. Um, and so I'm going to really take you on a fun Instagram journey. This is absolutely for people who are beginners, intermediates, and those of you that call yourself quasi-experts. Um, I always think there's something new to learn. In fact, I wake up every day, of course, looking at my Instagram feed and getting a ton of inspiration and connecting and engaging every single day. So I know a lot. I teach, I coach, I speak on the stage, but like all of you, there's always more to learn, especially from other people around you. And that's what's so beautiful about both the Google Plus community, which I absolutely love, and I've connected with so many of you. I've circled all of you that actually signed up for this today, last night, because I was doing my due diligence before getting on. But um, also, a lot of you are over on Instagram. So I want to go over there, but before I do, I want to tell you that I do have six different accounts, and I'm going to be popping in and out of some of them to show you some key teaching points. I'm also going to highlight a few um, people who are connected to me over on Instagram and give shout outs over there, people that have had success. Some of them are my clients, some of them are my friends. Because um, I really want you guys to understand the breadth of Instagram for your business. So I'm going to now jump over. We're going to do the screen share. And I'm going to show you my um, camera. Peggy, let me know that it's all good, okay? Can you see it? Oh, my God. Can you see it, Peggy? Oh, I can't hear you. Hold on. I can't hear... Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, so I can't hear Peggy, but can you all hear me? Yes? Sue, I can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, ahead. awesome. I couldn't okay. see your screen. Sorry, my mute was on and it would not unmute. Okay, so I just want to make sure. That, does yeah. it, is the sound good? It's perfect. Sorry, my thunder is awesome. so loud. I muted myself. So. Okay, good. Okay, so I just want to make sure all the listeners could hear. They can. Okay. 
So just to let everyone know, those of you that can multitask, and I know a lot of you are out there because you're on Instagram and you think visually, and all you Google Plusers, I'm sure, can multitask a little bit. So I'm giving you, I'm giving you permission. I'd like for you all to use the hashtag InstaGalLive, and you can take screenshots of things that I'm teaching you. You can share them on Twitter. You can also share them on Instagram. You can at mention me on Twitter at Subi Zimmerman and at mention Peggy Peg Fitzpatrick on Twitter. Um, we want to see your visual content. We want to know what you're learning throughout this presentation. And this is actually a lesson in teaching you about hashtags and the hub of hashtags curations, which I'll talk about is one of my seven key points. So again, take notes. Hashtag Instagal Live. I want to see your awesome content from this presentation. So we're going to go over these seven key steps to Instagram success. The first one is your bio. The second one is a hashtag strategy. Third one is a posting strategy. Then we're going to talk about engagement, my personal favorite. We're going to go into geotags. We're going to talk about call to action. And then finally, I'm going to teach you an awesome strategy that I use every single day with direct messaging on Instagram. So those are the seven things that we're going to get through today. All right, so with the bio, I want to bring this to everyone's attention. It's super important to have a clear, awesome picture of your avatar. and. I forgot to shut off my Twitter um, notification, so you might be seeing those popping up throughout the presentation, which will actually add a little bit of entertainment. And those of you that like to tweet will remind you to be tweeting. So I'm not going to go in and shut that off because it's going to be distracting. Um, but anyway, so we're going to talk about the bio. So the things that you want to know about the bio is to have that great avatar photo. It's a little smaller than a dime, as you know. You want it to be clear and recognizable, preferably the same avatar that you use over on Facebook and Twitter. Um, if you have a brand, and I'll show you my Subidoo account soon, you can use a logo if that's what you want to be promoting. But I recommend using your beautiful face because people really do like to do business with people they know, like, and trust. Then you want to make sure that you have a great username. Now, I'm one of the lucky few that I'm able to match up my username to my Twitter name. I know Peggy did not have that same success. So she's Peggy Fitzpatrick on Instagram, but Peg Fitzpatrick on Twitter. Um, but you want to get as close to your Twitter handle as you can. And there's certainly ways to do workarounds with your username. And anybody that has a challenge, I'm happy to help you problem solve. Um, you can message me later if you need that help. In your bio, you also want to list the keywords of who you are and what you do in a very clear, concise manner. And when I say keywords, I mean uh, exactly you're looking at one of my bios here, that I'm a speaker, I'm an author, I'm an online business coach. I like to be thought of as being authentic, high energy, I'm listing that I'm the creator of my online course, Insta Results. And I also am letting you know that I've created there goes the thunder, which is pretty cool, Peggy. <laughs> I've Sorry. created, that's okay, um, uh, number one creative live course, as many of you that are on the um, webinar are a part of, um, and I want you to know about that. And then today, this is so cool, you guys. Take note. Today, you can click this link in my bio and get on this Hangout. And so this URL can change at any time. And so today, I brought people here because my first post today, earlier, was letting you all know that Peggy and I were going to be on this Hangout. I listed the time. We got some comments here. And some people said that they're going to watch, which is really cool. So announcing a Hangout on Instagram is a great strategy if you want to drive more traffic to your Google, um, your Hangout, which I did this morning. Um, so that URL is something I usually put, I always put in as a bit.ly and I recommend putting it in as a bit.ly so that you can track it from bit.ly. You can track everything you do. So I suggest even putting um, your website as a bit.ly here on Instagram because so many people want to track their Instagram traffic. 
And so you can even tr um, put the link to go to land on any page that you want. So if you have an Etsy account, have it go there. If you're trying to get more opt-ins, bring them over there. If you're trying to grab, grow your Twitter account, bring them over to Twitter. So whatever you're trying to strategically direct your traffic to, you can put that link here. And I like to use emojis. I think they add color, excitement, and they cut down on the amount of words um, because you only have 150 characters that you can use here um, for your bio. So you want to have it as concise and use as many of these keywords as you can. So by using the finger to point down, it literally tells people to click here. So that is my bio on my Suvi Zimmerman account. Let me just show you a few other examples. This is my Instagram expert account. Again, I'm telling you who I am, what I do, and on this account, I'm bringing you my call to action is to download my 10 free Instagram tips. It is a bit.ly link. Again, I want to bring that to your attention. And I'm giving value right in the bio. So it's really a great place for you to just concisely say what you do. And you really want to make sure that it lines up so people can read it and understand who you are and what you are trying to do here on Instagram. I'm going to show you a couple of more. Um, bios, again, I told you I had six accounts. I'm taking you to three right now. So this is the Instagal Live bio where I grew a community over on Creative Live. I taught an Instagram course for three days and I grew this fabulous, wonderful community, the highest engaged community I have on Instagram. Um, and you can see there's over 1,600 people here who really um, connected to me through that three-day course. And on this account, I'm taking people to a one-to-one -one Instagram coaching hour, power hour that I do. So on each account, I'm bringing people to a different URL, different call to action. And so this is the picture Peggy and I took when we were in Hello, Sydney, and we lived like an hour and a half from each other here in the States. And of course, um, we were in front of Canvas Door. We love that color and their branding, and we had a wonderful time when we first met here. And I just wanted to, again, announce on this account that we were doing a Hangout today because some of my followers here might not necessarily be on all of my accounts. But this is my Creative Live following community, and they found me. Um, they're, they're following me here, so I wanted to do announcement on this account as well. So another great example of a bio, I'm going to just take you back through a few. Um, these are people that I know, so I want to take you outside of my accounts for a minute. I love that Keith actually, um, Keith is a dear friend of mine. We've collaborated on a couple of projects. He's also local in the Boston area, and if you don't know Keith, you want to connect with him. What I love that he did in his bio is he's letting you know about his website. He's using the 130 characters, no, the 30 characters that you get next to your username to tell you to go to his website. So if you click there, you see his username is if simply, but in his bio, he learned from me. He lined up everything really nicely. He gave a great call to action. He also let you know that this is the website he wants you to go to. I'm going to show you a couple other examples. Um, Jill Boudreau, who is one of my clients, she is a real estate property specialist. So her username is Jill Boudreau. She couldn't get her name, so she put her middle initial in there. That's another workaround for those of you that can't get your name. And she is letting you know that she's a property, a luxury property specialist right from the start. That is what you see when you land on her bio. And that's her personal account. And she also has her real estate account, her featured account. And in her bio here, she put her name so that you know that the real estate expert is Jill B, Jill Boudreau, and she's the real estate expert. So I want to just let everyone know that this is a really great place for you to expand on who you are and let people know what you do. Here's another example from another one of my clients. Asha is a molecular biologist. Oh my goodness, she's so smart. <laughs> and this is what her bio looks like. So she lined up everything here, and she's doing her call to, act to action to get that free download of her miracle ebook. 
So these are all great examples from other people who are trying to let you know who they are, what they specialize in, so that you click in and actually take action right within their bio. Because people don't have the time to figure it out if it's not clear and concise. So that is the bio. Now I want to talk to you about hashtags. This is the number two. So there's so much I could be talking about here and I'm just going to give you some of my key points that are really important for you guys um, to understand. On Instagram you can use up to 30 hashtags a post and I'm not suggesting that you put 30 in on each post but I want you to know that that's the number that you can use and if you use more than that you're going to get a red notification that is just telling you it's not going to work. So with hashtags I always tell my clients to use them in the secondary comments not the initial description and I actually didn't have time to do those this morning um, maybe I put it on this one let me just check if I have them here um, I'm just going to give you an example here so with did I put them here so when you use your hashtags um, and I'm going to tell you this without being distracted um, I now get so much engagement on Instagram I'm not always using my hashtag strategy on every post at least not when I initially post I go back in there 6 to 12 hours after I've posted to get some engagement and eyeballs on the post so with a strategy I suggest putting your hashtags I'm going to show you this what I do in my notes putting your hashtag in your notes in groups of six so this is an example of some of the hashtags that I would copy and paste right in a post. So I'm just going to copy these few here. And as you can see, I have six. And this one here should be, let me turn that into a hashtag. I have it as a at mention. Um, oh, I'll just grab it later. So here's the hashtags. Putting them in your notes in groups makes it easy and awesome for you to post quickly on Instagram also if you are posting to multiple accounts like I am different featured accounts you can separate those account hashtags so I'm gonna copy these hashtags go over to Instagram and literally just put them in the comments right here double tap and paste them right in okay so now those hashtags are cure the content the visual content is at the top of that hashtag post. So I have Instagram marketing as one of my tags. I have small business as another tag. See how I'm right at the top? And I have Insta results as another, and then the, the acronym for social media marketing. And so what I wanted to show, which this is a good example, is that some of these hashtags are moving very quickly. So I'm already seconds into this hashtag, and you're seeing another post of food which I have no idea what this has to do with social media marketing, but maybe it's something <laughs> we else. We thought was a good hashtag. Uh, <laughs> I so to your, I do the same thing that you do with going back and using my hashtags. And when I went to Sydney, I tried a new thing. I um, I put my group to my hashtags in Evernote, so then I could even do it on my desktop, not just <gasps> on my phone. So mm -hmm. I saved my Instagram hashtags by different groups just like you did and I named them different things so I had some for like creativity and then I had some for um, like Sydney travel Australia so oh, that was perfect and then I could I had it on my tablet my phone and desktop when I wanted to go back in later and update my post it worked really well yeah that is a great um, tool to be using as well Evernote absolutely I'm primarily using Instagram on my mobile but for those of you that do like Peggy use the desktop that's a fabulous way to stay on top of your hashtags also when you're typing sometimes you spell words wrong or at least I do because I'm typing so fast and so this way you can spell track right within your notes or Evernote and grab them and pull them over so I queued up a few here. I wanted to show you another example of hashtags from my store. This is my store here on Cape Cod, subidoo.capecod. That's the username of this account. And I'm showing you this because these hashtags have to do with this location specifically. It's on the Cape. It's in the town of Mashpee. 
It's in a location called New Seabury, which is, which is in the Pompanescent Marketplace. Subidu is the name of my business. I use the hashtag summer2014. And everything I sell has a preppy overtone and a nautical vibe. So these are good hashtags that we refreshed on the Subidu account. So yeah, Peggy, I, I think that this is a time saver. I yes. think anybody that has a business that is a little confused about their hashtags, if you spend some time putting together a hashtag strategy, I call it, you can really be much more efficient and um, save some time in your post. And, and, and Sue, those have actually helped your business, correct? I mean, people find oh your my store goodness. based on those hashtags. So it's not just a theory, people. Hashtags help people find your actual business. Imagine that. Yeah, so since you said that, I might as well segue right into this, which yeah. is my, my Subi Do store. So yes, I have to talk to this for, uh, for a second because this is the reason I'm teaching the world how to use Instagram for business now, Peggy. Mm -hmm. um, this, is, this is my store on the Cape, and um, like every other small business owner, I was looking for ways to get traffic in the door at my store, and I saw that my twins were on scrolling not like I don't want to say on their phones because everybody teenagers are on their phone right they were <laughs> they were scrolling they were scrolling I'm like what are you guys doing and they're like mom we're on Instagram don't you dare get on Instagram because then you're gonna start teaching Instagram <laughs> <laughs> our kids love oh, us come on <laughs> they love us we're the hip cool moms that know how to use social media so you gotta exactly. love that right yeah so so because, and I just love the kids that visit me at my store. I goof around with them all the time. I have so much fun. So I used to have my Subi Do account as part of my personal account. And I learned, Peggy, that the success on Instagram is when you get super focused in your niche. Mm -hmm. And you niche down. And when I say that, that's why I have six different accounts. They all serve a different purpose. Right. And so this account is for anyone who loves the Cape, Martha's Vineyard, Nantucket, and preppy nautical clothing. Now, I don't have a ton of followers here, but I want to tell you that they're real followers who come in my store on a regular basis and buy my stuff. Mm. Now, my sales increased over a year ago when I started using Instagram to bring traffic in the door at my store. And of course, I had to create a Shape of the Cape Instagram logo. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I'm going to put this on t-shirts next summer for sure. So, um, so this is tried and true. I have been using these strategies relentlessly um, on for my business, and I have increased sales. Separately, I've got to just talk about Jill for a second, Peggy. Yeah, I, I, love love you, I love it. I know you love Jill, and you met Jill, and so this makes the story even that much better. But it's it's the real life example, Sue, that may, that really prove that Instagram works and social media works. When you're when you're targeted and focused, these are the things that you can do. You can you can change your business and get more sales. You know, it's important. Absolutely, absolutely. So I have to share this story because Jill found me through hashtags. She she lives in my hometown, as have I, for 20 years. We I have three kids. She has four. I have twins. She has twins. We both have a house on the Cape. Hers is in Chatham. Mine's in Salmouth Heights. However, she was looking at the hashtag Cape Cod and Wellesley. And, of course, I've been using those hashtags in my posts. And she found me. And she's like, who is this crazy nut who keeps rollerblading <laughs> with her dog? <laughs> and... and and she, oh my God, she lives in Wellesley. I gotta connect with her. So she um, sent me a time trade appointment. We talked on the phone. Um, we met at a local coffee tea shop, and the rest is history. She hired me to help her with Instagram, help her with her business, help her with branding. She has become over a fifty thousand dollar client, and she found me on Instagram. Okay, that is amazing. That is just mind-blowing that you can attract your ideal follower through a hashtag strategy. Exactly. Separ separately, I've got to talk to you about Jill's success since she's been on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Jill self houses. Yes, the houses are expensive. She is a luxury real estate agent. She has personally sold so many houses from having a humanized brand on Instagram, not just selling property, but showing people who she is and humanizing her brand and really attracting her ideal follower. Now, 
I made her do this. She almost, she's like, Sue, I'm not going to do this. I can't do that. I can't put a picture of me sweaty on Instagram. She, Jill ran in the box. Okay, here it is. I'm so excited I found it. <laughs> Jill ran in the Boston Marathon, and she is a, she's a marathon runner. I'm like, put up a picture of you running. She's like, Sue, I don't have any makeup on. I'm going to be sweaty. I'm like, this is what people want to see. They wheel you. They want to know that you have interests outside of your, your work. So Jill put this up. She had three new um, clients that found her from this post that have hired her to buy houses. And Jill has made over a quarter of a million dollars in commission from her Instagram presence. Amazing. That is a ton of money, as yeah. we know. It's not normal. I'm not sharing that to brag about the money Jill's making. I'm sharing that to let you all know that you can make money doing what you love. Right. And, and that post has, like, all the essential elements, you know. Yes, yes she didn't want to be shown without makeup on, but being a marathon runner shows that you work hard and that you're dedicated. And those are characteristics which you want your real estate agent to have as well, you know. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Jill is just so philanthropic and such a giver. She's the most generous person I know. And she's become a... An amazing friend, and that's a bonus above and beyond the money. Mm -hmm. It's the power of the network and the community at large, and the relationships that are being built every day. So, so that do you have any questions or anything you want to add to the hashtag? I have one more thing to talk about um, with hashtags, but I was just curious what if you had any questions, Peggy. No, I I love it. I think the main thing is that people need to realize that they need a hashtag strategy. That you know, stop the random acts of hashtagging. You know, be be targeted and focused. That's what hashtags are for, and that's an area where Google Plus and Instagram can work together. You can use the same hashtags, because uh, Google Plus, you can put as many as you want down at the bottom. You wouldn't want to go to 30, but you could do, you know, your group of six super targeted ones and really just knock your social media out of the park. Absolutely, and I keep scrolling through pictures while you're talking so that those people that are listening taking screenshots. Um, and using the hashtag Instagal Live will have some good eye candy to do just that. <laughs> awesome. um, so the one other thing I want to add to the whole hashtag strategy is you can refresh your posts. You can literally go in. Now I have to share this with you. As of recent, you used to be able to go in and swipe your hashtags and repost them with the same hashtags. And I'm going to see if this works this time. So if you swipe to the left and throw them in the trash, you delete the hashtags. So I'm going to double tap and repost them and see if they come to the top of the feed um, with the same hashtags. Oh, so this time. So I have to tell you all that it doesn't work every time, so I don't want to mislead you, but it is working. It's at the top of the feed. Oh no, it moved down. So maybe it was at the top of the feed. So this is why I tell people 30 hashtags is the max. So I put them in five groups of six. Six times five is 30. And so if you have five groups of six, you can refresh them with new hashtags to get to the top of the hashtag feed. Does that make sense, Yeah. Peggy? Yeah. Okay. It used to be that you could refresh them with the same hashtags and climb to the top again. So I think Instagram might have caught on to that, and I, it, it's glitchy. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And I kind of like that all these tweets are flying through on my presentation, because these, yeah. be these will be here forever <laughs> in the recording. So that was the final um, information I wanted to add to the hashtag strategy. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about posting strategies, because people say to me, I have no idea what to post. I'm like, seriously, I wake up every day and my brain's like, oh, i got to post that. That's good. <laughs> I just saw that. But I know that's not normal for everybody. Um, some people need to plan. Some people need to schedule. Some people need to just curate them all at one time. I can do Instagram every day and have at least two posts to do a day on my personal account. And I also do the daily IG that I just showed, and I'll go back to in a minute. And I also do the Instagal Live. Um, we have three accounts that Rachel manages for me, and Rachel's the one tweeting live right now, so you can say hi to Rachel, Rachel A. Polish, P-O-L-I-S-H on Twitter. She manages um, Subidoo, Cape Cod, Subi Jewels, and the Instagram expert account, which you all absolutely 
want to follow above and beyond any of my accounts, this is the one. This is the one to be following. This is the one where I teach you tips, tools, and strategies every day on how to grow your brand. And what I want to point out here is the conversion rate. There's 274 posts and we have over almost 3,300 followers. Those are real followers. Those are people that are following this account because they love the content, it gives value, mm -hmm. and they've chosen to follow it. I'm not doing follow for follow, shout out for shout out, none of this spammy stuff that I see going on every day on Instagram. You want to attract your ideal follower and, and create relationships with engagement and not mm -hmm. beg for a follow. Um, everybody starts with zero, the big zippo. So do not, do not buy followers ever. I have so many clients that get in touch with me after the fact and they say, Sue, how do I get rid of all the bots that I bought? I'm like, mm -hmm. you're me. I'm like, you might need to start a new account because it ruins their whole account. It absolutely ruins their account when the conversion rate isn't the same and there's zero engagement and it says that you have 10,000 followers but two people liked your post. Right. What, that's, what that says to a lot of people is that you're not being authentic, that you care more about the quantity than the quality and it's all about on every single one of our accounts, it's about the quality of engagement, exactly. not the quantity. And I really want to hit home with this because every day you guys might be seeing people that are just writing random comments on your post and it annoys you because they're telling you to follow them, you can just swipe to the left and delete a, a, a comment, okay? And okay, so I would actually go in there and give the link for the Hangout right now if I wasn't doing it, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, so maybe Peggy or, or, or um, Rachel can help him out. But I want to tell you that if anyone is bothering you on your Instagram post, you can go in and block them and delete the comment. I have a video on this over on YouTube on at Subi Zimmerman is my channel and I have a playlist and I teach you how to delete a comma and get rid of the spammers because I know that they're there and they're annoying. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything to say to that, Peggy? Have you experienced no, any? I have not had any problems, but you know, I'm on the I'm on the slow doing it the right way plan with my Instagram. So I Yay. don't think I have any I don't think I have any spammy followers. Oh, so. Good. I like your slow doing it the right way. I'm going to show your account in a minute because I love that you're using WordSwag, my favorite app. <laughs> <laughs> and Canva, of course. <laughs> and Canva. Oh, no, I mean, no, I use both, but you've got to give shout outs. Okay. <laughs> so let me just, let, let's just talk about posting strategies. So mm -hmm. one of my favorite, and I sent this off to Rachel, um, is behind the scenes. And I don't know if I have a behind the scenes. Oh, yeah. Okay. So this is, okay, yeah, this is a good behind the scenes. So I did a photo shoot recently here on the Cape. And um, an amazing photo shoot, I must add. And the, the best thing about this photo shoot, I have to say, is that Sarissa flew in from Ohio, immersed photography. you got to follow her. She found me on Creative Live. I knew she was a great photographer. I'm like, I need a photo session. If I fly you in, will you come in and spend the day with me on the Cape? Are you like, she's like, are you kidding me? I'm there. Uh -huh. so, so here she is from Creative Live on the Cape, and we did this amazing photo shoot, and Rachel was behind her with this behind the scene. So there's behind the scenes for everything that you do in your life. People like to see what you look like when you're doing a webinar, when you're doing a Google Hangout, mm -hmm. when you're making your smoothie, when you're teaching your exercise course, when you're creating your content. Show us what it means to do what you do. Mm -hmm. People like to see that. Um, so behind the scenes is a really is a really great one. I also say give shout outs to those amazing thought leaders. So I did this Google Hangout with um, Chris Drucker. If you don't know Chris Drucker, he's amazing. He wrote Virtual Freedom, which I have on Audible. It's a great book. And I always do these little vignettes. In this case, I use DipTick, a third party app. Mm -hmm. And I created this. I gave a little shout out to his book cover. I got him. I got everybody doing the hashtag sign whenever they interview me. I'm like, stop. We got to do a hashtag. <laughs> and <laughs> and I, you know, I let people know that we connected, and he's going to be featuring me on his podcast. And we got some great engagement. At the bottom, you're going to see my hashtag strategy. And in this one, I I also included Chris because the visual content is about him, and I want to give a shout out to him. So I put virtual freedom. Let's see if we can find it. Yes, it's right here. You can see it in you know the third one down on the right. I'm, I'm in, his, in his hashtag hub, 
I call Virtual Freedom, that's his. And I also wanted to give a, a shout out to him. So if you want to get to know more about Chris Ducker, you can just click on his name and see all the great places that he speaks in his book and what people are saying about him. So you want to create unique hashtags, which we didn't talk about, that become hubs for your content. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's another posting strategy is to, to give shout outs to thought leaders. Um, you know, again, when you do a webinar or a hangout or a blog post, um, those are all good ones as well. You can show, um, here's Rachel and I rocking out the Life on Fire t-shirt. So again, giving shout outs to other people. When I tap on this picture, I tagged all these this picture. And what I did not tag, which I'm going to show you right here in the flesh, is that you can tag people on your pictures. So I'm going to tag Life on Fire, which is Nick Unsworth's up. See, this is what happens when I type live. I type typos. Um, it's, it's called being human. Yeah, it is, and that's <laughs> a good thing. So it's Life on Fire TV because he couldn't get Life on Fire, so there's another workaround for those of you that are like, dang, someone has my username. So Nick just added on fire. So what's really cool when you tag a picture, I'm going off topic a little bit, but I got to, is that <laughs> you, can, you can go right to Nick's, um, I'm going to save those tags, and when you touch this picture, you can land right on Nick's account. So mm -hmm. tagging your pictures and giving shout outs to other people is also a great way to grow your community. I'm telling you that Immerse Photography took this picture, Life on Fire, those are the t-shirts. Rachel Polish is my amazing rock star assistant content creator. And then here are three on the left of my other Instagram accounts. So you can tag up to 20 different people on a post. And what that Good does, time. Peggy, is that they, they get a notification mm -hmm. when they're tagged. And so often they'll come back to your post and they'll, they'll probably come on over here and give a comment. Mm -hmm. So I love that I got a comment that says you're on fire at Nick Unz, and that's Nick's other account. So Nick is the owner, the creator of Life on Fire. So it's all magical how... It's great. It's great to be able to connect connect the dots for people to help them. You're creating a little path for them. Um, I use that a lot for Canva as well to find content that people have hashtagged with Canva or Canva Nation or Canvangelist. And then I will, you know, either comment, like, comment and like and sometimes reshare their content. Um, there's so many different ways that it helps people find you and share more stuff for you to share yourself even. If you're, yeah, if you're a person who has a hard time coming up with content, you can resharing other people's content is a great way to, to go. Absolutely. And since you mentioned that, I will give a shout out to um, my favorite repost app as of late has been Repost Wiz, W H I Z, mm -hmm. because I love that in the repost, you actually see, um, I'm going to show, I love this, I just love this, rule mm -hmm. yourself, like everybody out there, rule yourself, don't worry about what anybody says about you, I actually have my rules right here, and I, what's so funny about this post, is I forgot number two, and somebody said, wait, what's number two, is it a secret? <laughs> so I'm having a conversation in the comments, I got 24 comments, and I'm like, yeah, number two is be you, because everyone else is taken. <laughs> okay, so, that, so, that, so that's number two. So, but I, I reposted this, but what I, I love about the repost app, Wiz, is that it shows the logo, the avatar of the person that you reposted. So I love that I can, I'm able to give an additional shout out yeah. to, to the content creator. You do not want to take screenshots of anyone's content without giving a shout out. People, no. often, people often ask me how to do it, and sometimes people didn't even know that these third-party apps exist, and they're all free. Yeah. So there's no excuse, especially after listening to uh, a presentation like this, why you shouldn't be reposting someone else's content. And I love, I did it again, um, actually, okay, I didn't do it again. Uh, they, Pumpkin and Sunshine sent me this in a direct message, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But um, I love this account, and I would absolutely repost information, uh, content from this account because every time you look at this account, it makes you go, "OMG, I want that! <laughs> I want that dog!" Yeah. I want, this, oh. is my, this is my favorite account on Instagram. <laughs> really? Do you follow Little Bub too? Little Bub is cute too. Oh, you'll have to tell me about them. But how can you not melt when you look at Pumpkin? 
Yeah. Or cook, cook. I mean, seriously. Okay. So posting strategy. Back to posting strategy. So there's just all <laughs> kinds of ways. I love that you're saying as a strategy for those that are stuck, not knowing what to do. Again, like I'll wake up and say, gosh, I'm trying to get more people to do my thunder, thunderclap campaign. What can I do on Instagram to bring people over? Mm -hmm. So I did this post asking people to come on over, and I reached my goal. I awesome. tagged, yeah, I tagged Chris Brogan, Kim Garst, Vivica, all online experts who contributed to this um, campaign, and they got a notification that they did. So I'm leveraging the power of people I'm connecting to, and I would absolutely do the same for them if they asked me to help them with any of their online campaigns. So, um, you know, you can just think like what's going on in your day that you can turn into a visual story either by a photo or by a video and how can you share that? So I'm going to quickly just show you this video because I did this yesterday. This is just for kicks, okay? So um, I was visiting at my parents who have this beautiful anchor and those of you that know me, everything I do with my branding is nautical. Based and I love anchors. So my husband took a picture, but not just one. He took like ten because he did. He's like, I'm taking pictures of you, so you don't know I'm taking pictures. So I decided to turn it into a little flippergram, which was I one of my favorite videos, and turn it into a post. So that created a fun little flippergram talking about me being anchored on Cape Cod and trying to get people over to my Subi Doo store. Um, telling people that if you like my dress, because I sell that, come on over <laughs> here to get it. So there's a way to pull people back and forth into your featured mm -hmm. accounts if they're all interconnected in some way. Um, in addition to, in addition to um, showing things that you have going on in your business, absolutely show some personal things. This is mm -hmm. my daughter who just moved into college. I know Peggy just moved hers in, and um, I just love that she had me put up this board on the left hand side, this chalkboard, it brought me back to my scrapbook days and um, she let me help her decorate her room which I just love doing. Mm -hmm. So you know I want people to know that this is who I am, this is me, I'm not working all the time, I'm having fun, I'm doing other things. This is my oldest daughter all packed up driving to DC for her first job. <laughs> I love, I loved that post, that's just so, like, and you know, it's fun to share these things, but it's so great to look back on them, you know, the ones with our kids, or even like us meeting each other in Sydney, that's like a really unique thing, you know, to go to yeah. Australia number one, but then to meet someone who you, you know, build a relationship with and, and are friends with afterwards is pretty cool. I love looking back at my pictures of my online friends that I meet at conferences or other places. Yeah, and also, Peggy, to that point, Instagram literally is a digital scrapbook. It, mm -hmm. it, it's chronological. You can go way back if you really want to see mm -hmm. my first photo. It's 3,000 photos deep on this account. That's awesome. But you, you, can, you, you can go my, back. My, my friend Jody Oaken is, is watching this right now, and she's the person that was like, you need to get back on Instagram. And I was like, fine, Jody. And that was at a conference. And, and I love Instagram now. I actually was on it when... I found it as an app way back in the day when no one else was on, so it was it was actually boring back then because no one was doing anything. So I kind of gave up on it, and then I came back because it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, well, this yeah, exactly. So here I am hashtagging my rollerblades because awesome. that's kind of funny, right? Yeah. So what's what's super funny about this is that there's an Instagram account called CrossFeet. <laughs> And every time they, they just take pictures of people crossing their feet. That's funny. <laughs> so they asked me to tag that cross feet. Isn't that's that a fun. riot? Is I that's, love that. that's kind of a take on the, on the Instagram um, where I stand, where people take a picture of their feet and the awesome place where they are. Hashtag where I stand. Oh, that's a good one too. Okay, so if you're a podcaster watching this, again, you know, Google, we're on a Google Hangout, you just can have a picture of you and the guests and give a shout out and drive traffic right to your Hangout, your podcast, your YouTube channel. There, wow. there is an endless, I could talk all day about this, uh, strategies, and so we're going to move on to the next point, but know that this is, I dive deep into this, into my online courses, and this is just a teaser of content. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Oh, but we do have to just end with quotes because everybody loves, loves quotes on any yeah. platform, not just Instagram, on Google+, on Pinterest, on Facebook. Everyone loves a little dose of daily inspiration. And so um, I want to just take you behind the scenes to this account, which is the Daily IG. And I want to talk about this for one second before I move on to, um, to engagement. And... Peggy, I created this account after I spoke at Social Media Marketing World because there were so much amazing quotes um, yeah. being said on the stage, and I wanted to celebrate all these amazing people that were speaking and really touching my heart with how they were speaking on stage. Mm -hmm. And I also, it's the time when Kim Garst told me about Word Swag, and I fell in love with Word Swag. So this account is only created, every post is created in the Word Swag app. Mm -hmm. And these are speakers, coaches, entrepreneurs, most of who I've met in person. And I'm giving a shout out to them. It's all about celebrating the people I meet mm -hmm. and giving a shout out to those people and tagging those people. And so I love quotes like everybody else out there. But I thought, you know what, let me create an account just for quotes. Now, what's cool about this account, I almost have a 10 to 1 follow post engage like per post I get 10 followers awesome so people love quotes and I also direct people on this my call to action is to take people to my website mm -hmm. because on my website I have an opt-in so if you click that it takes people right and you want to make sure you have a mobile friendly opt-in right mm -hmm. so it takes people right to my opt-in and my opt-in is the seven things not to do on Instagram so anyone watching this that needs to know what not to do, this is a great opt-in on my website where you can go and get that. But I just wanted to bring that to your attention because I have a different call to action on this account than I do on the other three that I had showed you. And, and that account is just so easily resharable right there. If you if you haven't posted on Instagram and you're like, oh, I should post something fun, go to, you have create a little um, group of accounts that you go to every day like Sue's and find something awesome. I share stuff like that on my personal account too. Um, I, I just have one account that I kind of, mine is like a conglomeration at this point, but um, I, I creating things that are, that you love can kind of guarantee that someone else will love it too, you know, especially quotes that motivate us. Instagram oh, definitely. Is, is like instant motivation. It's just all the good stuff. Totally all the good stuff. I love that. So um, so the, there's just endless posting strategies, as I said, but I want to bring you back here to see this. Um, and then I wanted to move right into engagement. And you guys might have been seeing that my orange notification has been popping up a little bit throughout the presentation, which is all good. So this is my favorite button on Instagram. It's the one with the heart. That's why it's my favorite. It's where all the magic happens. When I say magic, this is where you need to pay attention. So this is where people are starting to follow me. Um, this is where you get um, comments. This is where you see when new people who are on Facebook joined Instagram and you might want to go over and check them out because they're a friend of yours on Facebook. And you want to stay on top of this engagement. It goes back 75 posts deep. So you, if you get a lot of engagement like I do, you need to check in here a couple times a day so you don't miss anything. Right. Um, so when you get engagement, you get the notification. It tells you how many people commented, how many comments you got, how many new followers you got, and how many likes that you've gotten. So, um, so Stacy, following me, I would go in there and start following her. And this is one of the little no-nos, not to call you out on air, Stacy, but this is in the spirit of good energy. One of the things I always teach people is not to have their account on private. Um, she might have it on private because she's just starting and that's fine and she might want to be queuing up some content. But you want to have your account um, so that the world can see it. When you have it on private, it's like having the door closed, lights out, nobody's home for business. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you are on Instagram, you want to make sure that it's a public account. Um, so with engagement, here's some magic I'm going to teach you. So you go in and you find out who is engaging on your stuff. Who are the people that love what you're doing? And you want to go back and you want to give them some love. So when I say love, you want to double tap. You want to say thanks for all your support. Um, and really leave 
uh, authentic comment and not follow me, I'll follow you. <laughs> right. You know, I, I spend a lot of time engaging every day. One of the things I do on a regular basis every morning, Peggy, is I go into people's accounts and I tell them what they're doing wrong in a very positive way. I leave a little smiley face so they know that I'm not trying to like direct them but simply mm -hmm. tell them and then I say come on over to at the Instagram expert for more tips tools and strategies because a lot of people first start following me here on my personal account mm -hmm. and my goal is to really get people over to the Instagram expert account because that's where you're gonna learn the most and grow the most in your business so I, I do a soft um, comment and not say follow me here but say if you want to get more tips come on over here mm -hmm. um, so so it's really important to go in there now for people to and, and, and have engagement on a regular basis especially if you want to um, grow your followers now one of the strategies that you can use is to go into hashtags that are important to you mm -hmm. so hashtag so Instagram marketing I might go into a hashtag and see what somebody else is talking about on Instagram and see what they're doing and if I liked what John was doing I would see who uh, he who's following him um, this is one of those situations why I'm a, I'm a little um, curious because the conversions not working here if he has 13,000 followers and 3,000 posts there would definitely be some comments and more likes on this post if, if they were organic natural followers <laughs> yeah I'm not I'm not saying they're not I'm yeah. just, I'm just yeah. saying I'm a, I'm a little suspicious uh -huh. um, my, my, my antenna is up because yeah. I am the Instagram expert here and I know that this does not bode well um, mm -hmm. that there would be comments here um, so with that said if, if I thought the content was amazing I would go into some of these followers and maybe start having a conversation with them because they would be ideal followers for me on the Instagram expert account. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Did you, did you follow that logic? Yeah, I, I do that on Twitter as well. Like if someone has, someone has great, you know, someone is similar and they do awesome stuff, like I might see who follows them or they follow just to get find new people. Perfect. Okay, so that's engagement. I can't, t if you really want to grow your account, you need to engage. Do not be a lurker. If someone made you laugh, smile, taught you something, educated you, entertained you in any way, tell them. Mm -hmm. Tell them you like and respect their content and it gives value to your life because then you'll get more people doing the same for you. I can't mm -hmm. stress this enough. Exactly. And the ways the the ways that you can interact with people on Instagram, you can give them a double tap if you like their post. Yes, you double easy. tap. Yep, that that's that's easy, and that will definitely get more eyeballs on their posts. And what by that, I'm going to show you what I mean. I need um, I mean by that. So when you get likes on a post, you actually can go in to who you're following, and this is loading a little slowly. So whenever anyone likes a post it shows up in the following so let me find someone that okay I love um, his account I don't know how to pronounce his name the right way so I'm he's a photographer he's unbelievable absolutely mm -hmm. gorgeous okay Corinian I think um, he I like to see who he likes because he has such high standards on his photography right mm -hmm. so whenever someone likes a post you see who they like now Lonnie just did a interview with me on her podcast so I might go in and see who she likes because I know like and trust her mm -hmm. so if she, she's like in these accounts I might want to go in and like the same ones classy legacy is someone who I met from creative live she also is a client and I want to just keep tabs on her and who is she liking okay of course it's the ice bucket challenge which is awesome I haven't seen it with this many people doing it um, so this is a great <laughs> way great way to just go in there and see who you're following who they're liking mm -hmm. but okay. also it's the same you know social media reciprocity is important if you want people to like comment and share on your things then you need to like comment and share other people's things so same on Instagram Google Plus everywhere totally true now see how that one is popped up next to my name mm -hmm. that means I was mentioned in a photo 
So this is great. This is actually you're gonna you're gonna like this post. <laughs> so Jen is my travel agent, and she just announced that she booked my hotel. I'm going to San Francisco to be <laughs> in my, Michael Port's audience at Creative Live. Awesome. So she's my travel agent. So she just announced that she did that, and she tagged me, and it shows up as a photo of me. Now, if someone tags you and you don't want it to show up in your photos of you feed, you can just go in there and go into the magic three buttons. Go into photo options and you can hide it from your profile. I'm not going to do that because I like that she did this for me. So that's pretty cool. All these behind the button things, I go in really deep, full on in a whole three hour course. So I'm not going to be able to touch on everything. I'm just kind of whipping through a lot of the stuff I know, but I want to show it to you as it comes up. So, right now, the next thing, number five, we're going to talk about is geotag. Are you ready, Peg? You're going to love it. Yes. That. Actually, someone asked about that in the comments. So they'll be happy. Geotagging for you, Google Plus. Awesome, awesome. So Peggy, I sent you the video that Kim Garst and I did on yeah. YouTube. It's 20 minutes long. I'd like you to put that and share that in the event page so people yeah. can watch that. It literally walks people through how to do everything I'm going to talk about in the minutes, but it shows it in detail. Mm -hmm. I'm um, putting so, it in right now, so go ahead. Awesome, awesome. So geotag. So if you have a physical location, as I do, um, Subi do. Let's just go back there for a second because that will be a good example. Um, let me start with that. So obviously, if you have a physical location, it's so important to be geotagging your posts. And what by doing that, you literally take people in map right to your location, which is so important for me because my location is located in a place that is hard to get to. And um, I want people to absolutely be able to drive there and be able to pull up in the car and get right to where my store is. So you can open it up in maps and get people right to where your location is. Now, if you don't have a location-based business, I show you on the video how to do a mock geotag, like the one I did here, right here in this post that we did this morning. I created a bit.ly for this hangout and I let you guys know right here in the post I said the link is in my bio so I gave you two opportunities. You could click my bio to join out or you could also copy and paste, um, write down and paste in your browser the tiny that I created to get to this. And to do a mock geotag the video is in YouTube and you guys can all watch it there. It's just going to take me too long to do it that way. Mm -hmm. So you also can do a mock geotag with your website if you want to get some eyeballs on your website. I'm going to see if I have one. Yeah. So here is me telling you I want you to master Instagram for business. And this was part of that photo shoot. I wanted people to know um, that anchor your brand with Sue B. This is like a tagline that I use. And I just wanted to put that up top so when people read that, they think of me. They think of Susan Remember when they want think of anchoring their brand. Um, because such all this a great such a great tagline, Sue. Isn't that good? Yeah. yeah. Super good. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, we that's something we come up recently with and I'm I'm really excited about it. So so that's another mock geotag and I might have one here. No, let me just see if there's any more that I can just show you other examples of a geotag. Okay, so this is me doing a post and I use the geotag of where I did it from. So sometimes you might simply want to geotag your post so they show up in the feed of that. So here I am. This was done like a week ago, so I'm still in the Falmouth Heights feed. So if you're a hotel, for example, or an establishment, a restaurant, you want people to be geotagging all day long so that your pictures show up in the feed of that geotag content. So this geotag, it's kind of like the same thing I'm teaching you about the hashtag content is the geotag content. You can show up in the geotag feed. Isn't that cool, Penny? Yes, very, very cool. Yeah, and, and, so, and you can see how beautiful it is on Cape Cod from the picture. <laughs> on that hashtag, by the way, on <laughs> the geotag. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to see if I did another one just to give you different examples. Um, I don't know if I did, oh yeah, Thalmas Heights, but that was another one too. So depending on, so I, actually, Peggy, I want to I say this, that when I'm at a conference, 
I always geotag the location because mm -hmm. I want people to know that I'm at that conference. And surprisingly, other people are at that conference. I didn't know they were going to be there. Mm -hmm. um, so here's an example. I was Brendan Bouchard's Experts Academy at the Four Season at, in Sydney. This is when we met. And there were other people from B school, Marie Folio's B school, that were also here. And we all met up and we had a networking event. And I don't know if we still sit. Most of the time you do hotels, it's always food and the like. So you have to scroll back quite a bit, I'm sure, to find that post of, of me at this. And I'm not going to waste time doing that. But um, it's really great to be part of the geotag content when you're at a conference as well. And you will sit within that. And this is great for hotels as a marketing um, strategy is to, to really encourage people to use their geotag when they're taking pictures within the hotel. All right, any questions there, Peggy? We're going to send people nope. to that video so they really can yeah, dive in. I already put that in the event, but we should we should move on because we're already at over an hour. So. Oh my goodness. Okay. So the last two things I, yeah. I know I told you I, I told you this is why I taught 18 hours on Creative Live. There's just so much content. Yeah, it's great for people to see how much there is to learn about Instagram. So. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to just quickly talk about call to action. So call to mm -hmm. action. We talked about it in your bio. You want to tell people, you want to direct people to your URL. You also want to um, use it, and I'm going to show you one of the accounts that we didn't pull up, which is um, Subi Jewels, which is another one of my accounts. Very niche. Um, I sell nautical jewelry here. We extracted this one out from Subi Do Cape Cod. And here we do call to action with contests. And a call to action is really telling people what you want, what action you want them to do. Like the picture by double tapping, tag, mm. follow Subi Jewels, and tag three people for a chance to win this beautiful bracelet. So we do contests on this account. Awesome. And, we, and yeah, it's great. And we give away free jewelry. And the real cool thing is every time we give it away, about three people buy it. So it's a lost <laughs> lead. It's about a lost leader, but it's really, it works to our advantage. So over to Subi Jewels just simply to see how to do great call to actions on your posts. Okay, and lastly, I want to talk about direct messaging mm. because a lot of people don't even know about this feature. Now, direct messaging, to get there, you want to go to your home button. It's right here. This, If you have a direct message, the notification would be one, two, or three. So I created a direct message today so that I could show this to you guys and to show you the strategy. And I use direct messaging a lot, and a lot of people communicate with me that way. Like, you know, Keith told me he was at um, a conference, and he was talking about me at this conference, and he just shared it privately. I have my cute girls on the Cape asking me if they can help me set up the store. Mm -hmm. We do some teen stuff. Yeah, I know the girls, all the, all the young teenagers are all over this. Um, they don't think their moms know about it, so they're like direct messaging and Instagram. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so... Stand by if you're a mom with that. Now, um, here is what our strategy is, and I want to end on this. I think this is a really great place to end this presentation, Peggy, because what I do is I keep track of all my new followers every day. And then I send them a nice direct message. I say, thanks for following my personal account. To get daily tips, tools, and strategies, come on over to my featured account at the Instagram expert. Also, be sure to text the word... Instagal to this number, and I send you the 10 things to do on Instagram. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting your email. Yes, it's an opt-in. Yes, I'm growing my email list about 25 people a day, which is awesome. pretty amazing. Yeah. And I'm giving you value. I'm giving you a download. Now, if you live outside the U.S., don't you worry. We got you covered. Mm -hmm. you, need to, you need to send a request at subizimmerman.com because the tech messaging costs money to do it outside of the U.S. So we want to make sure everybody can have access to this um, PDF. That's awesome. So you definitely gave like 800 or more <laughs> ways that you can connect with people and do awesome things on Instagram, which is fantastic. And I know a lot of people have probably just got their eyes opened up really wide about what they thought Instagram was and what it really is. So that's amazing. So yeah. um, before we go, wait, I'm going to do one picture while we're on. Yeah, I was going to tell you, we both should do a hashtag, and everybody listening needs to take our picture. Okay, everybody listening needs to take our picture and hashtag 
hashtag tweet Instagram us, okay, Peggy? So yeah. I'm going to go to the right, you go to the left, and we're going to smile for like three seconds. But no I'll go that way. Okay, okay. <laughs> Who's taking the picture? All right, somebody must have. Okay. <laughs> so before we run, though, one, one last thing. Um, Sue has an amazing event in Boston that I will be coming down for, which is very soon, on September 20th. I did put a link to it earlier down in the event, but if you just want to, like, two seconds, just tell who's going to be there and what they can yeah. learn when they're there. Yeah, thanks for, for saying that. Yeah, so Sail to Your Success, it's, it's of course, a nautical theme, but we're not going sailing. It's at a hotel, the Meridian in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I invite all of you to attend, especially if you live in the New England area. I would love to see you there. Peggy's going to be there. I have John Jantz as my keynote leading off the event, author of the Referral in Engine, Duct Tape Marketing for Business. I have my good friend Chris Brogan in the room. He's going to be introducing me to the stage and doing a private book signing um, of, with his new book. And then I have my dear friend Nathan Latka, 24-year-old rock star entrepreneur. The owner of Hey Yo is going to be closing up the event. And then in between, we have 12 amazing speakers, Peggy. It's just going to be so much fun. It's really awesome. for those people that are in business, ready to take it to the next level, jam-packed, full-on day, and it ends with a networking um, gathering at the end. So it's going to be fabulous. Awesome. Okay, well, thanks to everybody who tuned in, everybody who tuned in and stayed with us because everybody, <laughs> were, they were glued to YouTube. Um, and we, <laughs> thank you. We will check out the comments on the event page. And thank you so much, Sue, for coming and sharing all your Instagram skills. So, Well, a little bit of your Instagram skills that people can learn more about if they want to. Yes, there's so much more. Yes. Yeah. But this was really amazing. I thank you so much for your time. Hey, my so. pleasure. I had a great time. Awesome. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Mm -hmm.